The SEC leaves cryptos off of their spring and summer agendas. The World Economic Forum has a new publication listing XRP as a sustainable cryptocurrency to take a look at. And we've got a new FUD article on the writing on the wall being there for Ripple and XRP. And to those people, all I can say is you can't live in fear. Comment below if you know what film that is from. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed on all the latest news and updates. Now let's take a quick look at the market and then we'll dive right in. I'm going to take myself off screen here. That way we have the full breadth of the screen to take a look. So crypto market is down slightly day over day at about 1.5 trillion, about a half percent decrease. Bitcoin at 37,000, Ethereum a touch under 2,400, and XRP holding steady around that 85 cent mark, holding down the seven spot. Now let's take a quick glance in our money minute at a way for you to save money as you're shopping. Now I get no financial benefit from showing this, but again, I did want to increase the number of personal finance topics we share here. And so if you visit the website slickdeals.net, this is a great place to start anytime you shop online. There's really great savings here as you're looking to you know, buy various things, whatever it might be. I like to start here personally. You can see they have great deals every day. Uh, you can see like $120 for a 27 inch monitor, which is a fantastic deal. Or here, we just bought this ourselves here, $10 for a giant tub of crayons. Uh, for the summertime here with the, the girls, they love to color and we always seem to burn through crayons. So that's a great deal. But anyway, I'll link it down below. Again, it, there's no, you know, kickback or anything for me, but just to help you save a little bit of money, I think it's a great place to start. Now, let's take a look at the SEC. The SEC has left cryptocurrency out of its agenda for the spring and summer. And this is really interesting as you see that they have varying priorities and this just doesn't seem to be one that they want to move forward on very quickly. So this article came out today addressing some of the things that were uh, released earlier this past week. So the SEC did not explicitly identify crypto as a target for upcoming regulation. If you read between the lines, though, there are some opportunities, but let's take a look here. So they're obviously not too concerned with it. Their agenda here for the spring and summer was released this last Friday. And despite whatever uh, Gary Gensler has said about regulation on crypto exchanges or cryptocurrencies themselves, there hasn't really been anything uh, to come out as far as what they want to look at. Instead, the agency is crafting and finalizing rules for special purpose acquisition companies, better known as SPACs, short sale disclosures, money market reforms, gamification of trading platforms like Robinhood, and a host of other issues. The SEC's agenda is broken into three stages, pre-rule, proposed rule, and final rule. And so I think it's really important we remember that the SEC covers a very broad variety of topics. So crypto is not the only thing that they deal with. I mean, we obviously have not seen any clear definition of who should even be in charge of this, and Gensler himself has even commented on that. So their focus as of right now is a lot of the things we've heard in the news lately. SPACs, uh, trading platforms like Robinhood, the things that have happened like with GameStop. So that's where they're going to be concentrating. Dig a little deeper, however, and you might spot areas for the SEC to discuss crypto. I could imagine the gamification thing touching on digital assets. Uh, lawyer Gabriel Shapiro told Decrypt in reference to proposed rulemaking for trading platforms. Moreover, SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce proposed safe harbor for crypto projects could conceivably appear during a pre-rule process on exempt offerings, which would be fantastic. We've talked about her safe harbor proposal in the past. I think it's a really great uh, opportunity to help encourage innovation in the crypto space. So that's something that I personally will be keeping my eye out for if we see anything uh, come of that. 
That's because, under her proposal, projects with tokens that might normally be considered securities, that is, tradable investment contracts, would be given a time-limited exemption from filing with this agency or with the agency. So I think that's a very good thing. Again, I think it gives a three-year safe harbor, which would be very nice. During an appearance before the House Financial Services Committee in May, Gensler discussed how regulation of crypto exchanges could protect investors, but he suggested that it would need to be headed up by Congress, as crypto is neither fish nor fowl. The SEC doesn't consider Bitcoin and certain other cryptocurrencies to be securities. Right now, there's not a market regulator around these crypto exchanges, and thus there's really no protection around fraud or manipulation, Gensler said. So yes, obviously, they do consider certain cryptos to not be securities, but others they do. Which isn't to suggest the SEC isn't monitoring the sector. Just Thursday, it warned that Bitcoin futures are a highly speculative investment, and it's levied over $1.7 billion in penalties against crypto firms, according to a May report from Cornerstone Research. Does that name sound familiar? Comment below if you remember where we've discussed them recently. Most of the agency's crypto-related allegations were related to fraud, and over two-thirds dealt with alleged unregistered securities offerings. Interesting that this article does not specifically mention XRP, which is the one that's uh, probably the biggest and uh, most well-known at present and the one that's actually ongoing. But uh, nonetheless, an interesting article just highlighting the fact that while the SEC is important in this case against uh, Ripple, we see that they have a very broad scope. And so crypto as a whole is not necessarily even uh, front of mind for them as they deal with all these other things that have been in the news throughout the course of this year, particularly in regards to the stock market. Now, the World Economic Forum has published a new article here, this community paper called Cryptocurrencies, A Guide to Getting Started. This just came out June 2021, and it's for the Global Future Council on Cryptocurrencies. So if you look here, it is a fairly nice summary of what uh, really makes up cryptos. It talks about how you buy cryptos and transactions. It talks about the blockchain programmability, govern, governance, and so on. So it's a great read. I won't go through it in detail, but I will link it below. As always, uh, all the sources will be in the video description for you to refer to if you are so inclined. Uh, but the one thing I did really want to point out in here, and if you are on uh, crypto Twitter at all, you've probably seen this begin to circulate, is in this section here in the article called Throughput and Scalability, they do discuss the cryptos that they believe to be scalable uh, for future use. So scalability is a comparative term within blockchain technology, most notice, notably for assessing throughput. Throughput approximates the number of transactions that can be processed per second. However, with many new and innovative blockchain technologies and underlying protocols, throughput is just one factor to consider in assessing the overall scalability of a network. The following outlines the throughput of various networks and provides resources for learning more about their scalability features. And so here you go. Are, these are the six that they've identified. There's ones you, of course, will be familiar with, but I think it's worth noting that they uh, specifically call out the XRP Ledger here. The XRP Ledger is a global open source public blockchain that focuses on payments as a use case. XRP boasts 1,500 transactions per second, cost 0 0.0003 cents, or dollars rather, so that is 0 0.03 uh, cents per transaction and settles in three seconds. The following resources are available, and there you have it. Um, so very interesting uh, to see that you're getting the recognition here along with some of the other players like Car uh, Cardano and Stellar. So I'll link it uh, below again just uh, for you to refer to. And if you take a quick look, you can see where the uh, contributors to this are coming from. The vast majority of these are actually coming out of the U.S. So very interesting to see that. Now, let's take a final look here at this article, which I thought was interesting to see. Not necessarily one that I would endorse uh, per se as being the uh, the best summary here. The author has a, a very interesting take 
on uh, how the case in particular with the SEC is going to impact Ripple, the company. And uh, he also, just within here, is um, a little bit fast and loose with how he refers to things. So you'll see him interchangeably use Ripple when he means uh, XRP and so things like that. So try not to be too distracted by that because I found it distracting in the reading. But take a look here. We'll read through it. It's a short read. And I, I want to get your perspectives on some of this because it does sort of peddle in the FUD that we see uh, coming out of various articles related to uh, XRP, at least at current. So here, let's take a quick look. This is from Josh Inamoto, and he says, even though I own some Ripple cryptocurrency coins, <coughs> XRP, I haven't followed every step of the SEC lawsuit that initially lev uh, leveled the underlying company Ripple Labs. To me, it's a moot point. Interesting. Okay. Uh, with traders in the SEC or in the U.S. essentially locked out of transacting their XRP holdings, I find myself in the classic irony of the shipwrecked. So much water, none of it drinkable. Setting aside my personal feelings about the so-called Ripple coin. Uh, no, nobody calls it the Ripple coin, but okay. Uh, however, the developing company just might secure a legal victory. Now, I should reiterate that nothing I have to say about XRP or any other matter is financial advice. Well, thank you for that uh, disclaimer, uh, because now you're saving me the time of having to say that as well. <laughs> And on that note, nothing I say about the SEC lawsuit should be construed as legal advice. I'm just a casual observer making observations and writing about them. But my, what an observation that is. Attorney Jeremy Hogan, who we are very familiar with in this case, uh, stated the following. Ripple never held an ICO because the XRP ledger was already in existence when Ripple was formed. So prior lawsuits against companies that held ICOs do not tend to show that Ripple had fair notice that what it was doing was illegal. Ripple is making an important distinction here. If that's the case, that might limit the SEC's arguments against Ripple Labs. Without defining what a cryptocurrency is and what an ICO is, it's difficult to accuse an entity of a violation. That's akin to charging someone with a speeding violation without first establishing speeding laws. However, the SEC could still press Ripple, arguing that any novel attempt to sidestep, all, sidestep already existing laws regarding initial public offerings would constitute a securities violation. Whether you call XRP an ICO or not, if it has the spiritual components of an IPO, it could be fraud. It's an interesting take here. That basically, though, that is what the SEC is doing. The SEC is arguing that uh, Ripple, the company, offered these uh, XRP as a securities offering. And so they're not necessarily even alleging it to be an ICO, but they're saying that it was an offer or sale of securities. But let's continue on here. Don't miss the bigger point about Ripple. Now, please note that I'm just playing devil's advocate regarding the SEC's mindset. Honestly, I don't know what the SEC is thinking, nor do I have insider information regarding the outcome. Logically, this also means I don't know how this lawsuit will ultimately affect XRP. While the complexities of the XRP legal battle provide much intrigue, I'm more interested in what this controversy represents for cryptocurrencies. All this talk about democratization and decentralization has got me thinking. No matter how appealing a blockchain-based project is, everything ultimately gets centralized. So this is just a really interesting take that uh, basically the author here is saying there's no way to decentralize and he's going to talk at length here about why he thinks that's the case. Uh, I, I must apologize for being such a bundle of joy lately, but folks, I can't help but ask the question, isn't the decentralization and democratization of money argument just like the free range chicken narrative? Free range or not, the chicken's fate is still the same. Interesting comparison. In the same vein, it ultimately doesn't matter if the SEC wins or not. The federal agency sent a very powerful message. You can run in decentralized la-la land. Decentralized la-la land. I, that's very... <laughs> Very uh, unique in the <laughs> approach of uh, taking this. It, it brings back to mind uh, what uh, Bill Maher had said about cryptos uh, previously and about it being, you know, funny money and everything like that. But, okay, so here he goes. 
you can run in decentralized la la land all you want, but in the end you can't hide. That's because whether you want to buy a house free and clear or drive the seeming, seemingly ubiquitous Lambo, you've got to come back into the system. Of course, that's when the agencies, the SEC for the distributors and the IRS for the users, will get you flashing lights and all. True XRP is tied to a functionally decentralized infrastructure, and through its blockchain architecture, Ripple is able to facilitate cross-border payments at lightning-fast speeds and lower costs. Further, investors in XRP are able to enjoy profitability outside the mainstream system. But again, when you want to actualize that profitability, You've got to come back in. That's when we all meet our government butcher. If you want to play, you've got to pay. Take a trip to El Salvador from now on, and you may soon be greeted with signs everywhere that read, and I, I apologize, my Spanish accent is terrible. Paga aquí con Bitcoin. Basically, Bitcoin is accepted here. As you probably heard El Salvador became the first nation to accept the cryptocurrency as a parallel legal tender. It's a remarkable move that on paper should be the massive credibility boost that crypto proponents were long seeking. Well, someone needs to tell that to the Bitcoin price. While the price did move higher on the news, the level where it currently sits, a hair shy of 37000 is incredibly unremarkable. This was a crypto that breached the 64,000 threshold and legitimately appeared to have a chance of cracking six digits. Now proponents are hoping that it doesn't fall below 30k. I think this too is a warning for XRP, even if Ripple wins its lawsuit and gains back trust from exchanges that dump the underlying coin, the virtual currency market is wildly unstable. Therefore, it could still lose despite winning meaningful victories. So there you have it, another article that seems to be kind of down on crypto and uh, XRP in particular. So I just think it's really interesting that we continue to see these crop up um, in the news. This article really didn't say a lot. I, he had some points and he talked about various aspects uh, of XRP and he did correctly mention you know, things about how fast it can process transactions. But at the end of the day, uh, all he really had to say here is, okay, well, with cryptos, you end up having to pay taxes. I mean, that's largely the takeaway here is that no matter what you do uh, with your cryptos, you end up having to pay into the system. But I don't think that that's really something that we didn't know. Uh, I think it's been pretty clear that from an IRS standpoint, you have to pay taxes on your cryptocurrency gains. I didn't think that um, there were too many people assuming that you would be able to totally avoid or evade the tax ban when it comes to your cryptocurrencies. But, you know, it's things like this that do kind of make you scratch your head that there's so many people out there trying to, you know, peddle fear on things that I think are already, you know, kind of well known. So comment below what you think about that article. It, it does really interest me to see things like this that uh, do pop up and, you know, what it might do to people who have the quote unquote paper hands. Um, and if it encourages people to sell off because of some level of fear caused by this. But thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I do appreciate it. Comment below too uh, how you feel about the new setup. I actually got all the hotkeys and everything set up uh, in my uh, OBS so I can switch back and forth a little bit easier. I think I fixed the camera issue where we were having a little bit of autofocusing. So let me know how that worked out and if it's a little bit better from a user experience standpoint. Always trying to improve here. And I appreciate those of you who have already uh, given me feedback. It's been very helpful. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of the weekend, and I will see you in the next one.